Hey there guys. As you can tell from the scenery behind me, I am not in the normal desert location. We are up in the White Mountains of Arizona on one of our multiple family camping trips that we like to take several times a year. And right now I am out to collect some firewood, which normally I do with my gas powered chainsaw. But thanks to Ryobi and the Home Depot Perspective, they sent me one of the 40 volt Ryobi electric chainsaws. So I'm going to give it a shot today. Uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit, show you uh, maybe some of the features, then I'll cut some wood, and uh, maybe I'll show you a few other things up here in the beautiful White Mountains of Arizona. Well, here is a closer look at the saw. This is a Ryobi 40 volt HP series chainsaw. Comes in three different sizes. This one happens to have the 18 inch bar. And from this perspective is just the same as any other chainsaw. It's got a chain brake. And the chain runs along a guide bar. And if you need to change out the bar, flip the bar or change the chain, do any maintenance like that, has the standard two nuts right there. On this side, just like any other chainsaw, it has the fill port for bar and chain oil. And one cool little thing that I thought was pretty neat is that the scrunch is located right here so that you can use this to work those two nuts to change out the bar. The only real difference between this saw and any gas powered saw is the drive mechanism. There's no fuel to mix. You don't have to choke it and yank on a cord a bunch of times. You simply just insert your battery and go. This uses a 40 volt battery. This one happens to be five amp hours, but I've got a spare over here and I'm pretty confident that this is gonna do the job. Also, if you're wondering, this is the same battery that I used when I used the auger on the last video. Super powerful battery. And uh, let's go cut some wood. And one last thing, what does it take to get this thing going? Well, you simply just take off the chain brake, depress this button, and pull. Well, you're probably wondering what I'm gonna be cutting down with this saw, and the answer to that is pretty easy. I'm not gonna be cutting down anything. This is the National Forest, so I have to only cut firewood that is dead and down. Um, and there is a little bit of trick to that because number one, we like to burn aspen in our camps. It burns cleaner, it's easy to split, just a nice wood to have around. Um, and the trick for that is finding the one that has fallen down because millions of them fall down every year in windstorms and stuff like that. Um, but you got to find the one that's down and then you got to make sure it's not rotten in the middle. And then the last and most important component is you got to make sure it's small enough that you can carry it towards your vehicle or ideally you want to find one that is very close to the road so you can just chop it up right there and throw it in the pickup. I'm still looking right now, but I am going to find there was a couple of good candidates, but I knocked on them and I could tell that they were pretty rotten. So we'll find one in just a second. Uh, it feels pretty solid and you can tell it fell down on its own. I think this is going to be the one. This is for the logs to sit up on so I can cut them.
All right, guys. Well, I think that is pretty much going to do it for this video. Unfortunately, I think I missed lunch by being out here for too long filming and cutting firewood, but I will definitely have enough firewood for the next uh, two or three days. Uh, I don't know if you guys could tell, but I think the saw performed very, very well. Obviously, I got it for free, but I would have zero reservations about spending my own money on that saw. Very impressive. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention that I think is actually a pretty good benefit uh, if somebody were to have a battery-operated saw like this uh, yes, obviously there's going to be a finite uh, limit to how much wood you can cut before you have to charge it. Uh, but one thing that I found very awesome is that you don't have to worry about the elevation. So when you've seen me cut wood in the past uh, with my gas-powered saw, uh, sometimes I will adjust uh, the mixture a little bit because like where I am right now is about 8,800 feet, 8,700 maybe. And uh, obviously, if you're cutting wood at say three or four thousand feet, and you come up to nine thousand feet, uh, sometimes the mixture needs to be changed a little bit just because there's less oxygen in the air. But anyway, uh, I don't know if I'm going to add any other uh, camping clips in this. Uh, it just depends on when I get to the editing stage. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will probably have another camping video after this one. See ya. Hey, yeah. Look at that. Woo! I think that might be it.